This is a podcast by the Business Times, presented by UOB. If one were to play a word association game, art would not be the first thing that comes to mind when mentioning banks. So what's the connection, if any? Here to tell us more is Christine Ip, Head of Group Strategic Communications and Brand, UOB. Welcome to the Business Times Future of Finance podcast. Christine, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me, especially at the beginning of the Lunar New Year, the Year of Dragon. A lot of happiness and a lot of positivity. UOB is a bank, not a museum. How did UOB first get involved in the art scene? UOB, we are a bank. We are turning 90 next year. So with such a long history, and I must say that art has been part of our DNA, embedded in the blood of our, our bank. So you're right, we are not a museum, but as a bank, we believe that art plays a fundamental role in enriching lives and strengthening societal bonds in our communities. It is a unifying force, connecting people and cultures across language, geography, and time. It illuminates our lives and opens our minds to possibilities. And that's why this is important for BAM, because we also move across different time, different geography, and we want to connect our people in the area we play, in the business that we are operating. During the COVID time, the pandemic, we brought the competition online to send a very positive message to all in the global fight against the pandemic, that we are committed to unveiling and promoting artistic talents and to draw out the importance of being united in trying times, leveraging the power of art and digital to unify and to heal. And so we create an online museum, we create an online gallery, we still do competition so that especially during very difficult time, artists who also have to strive and we help them to stay positive. How did the Painting of the Year competition come about? The UOB Art Collection started in the early 1970s when the bank began collecting works to support the art scene and to have quality artworks by local artists that would be displayed within our new office building in Bonham Street. Our objective is to encourage local artists and at the same time, the public to appreciate art. In 1982, UOB organized our first UOB Painting of the Year competition to uncover and nurture local artistic talents. Why do you think it's important to support the arts and give back to society? Well, I think that is important because art and banking are born of passion and planning. Knowing when to use a fine touch and when to act in with bold strokes. And we started by a group of overseas Chinese. And as such, art and strokes, the way to paint is resonate what we stand for. Banking is more than numbers, and it has the power to transform lives. To us, this is the art of banking. The bank has a CSR program called UOB Heartbeat. How does Heartbeat help people through the arts? Well, of course, in addition to our painting of the year, which is Singapore's longest running art competition in Singapore, we also help to promote this beyond into Southeast Asia. And by having Heartbeat, our CSR program, we also regularly invite UOB Painting of the Year artists to conduct and workshops for children in the underserved community to help to uplift them by raising appreciation of art and make art accessible. So now today, Painting of the Year and Heartbeat Run, we also operate in other markets beyond Singapore. That's in Crude Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, Vietnam, Hong Kong, as well as China. We're recording this interview on the seventh day of the Lunar New Year. I know that Heartbeat usually has some Lunar New Year festivities planned. How is UOB welcoming this Dragon Year? Well, normally in the past few years, we commissioned UOB Painting of the Year artists to create artworks for charity auction during our Lunar New Year client dinner hosted by our commercial banking colleagues Funds raised will go towards uplifting the lives of the beneficiaries. Actually, we just host this year on the fourth day of the Lunar New Year, and we are very excited that um, everyone very smoothly, and we also broke our record of fundraising. So 
more people, more underprivileged communities will benefit out of this. And we continue to foster it across our network. Still to come, how UOB's Painting of the Year has helped the bank in more ways than one. This episode of Future of Finance is presented by UOB. And now, back to our podcast. Thank you for staying with us. This is the Future of Finance. I'm Lee Kim Siang, speaking with Christine Ip from UOB. As you mentioned earlier, the Painting of the Year competition is one of the longest running competitions. In fact, 2023 was already the 42nd year of the competition. How has it generated more conversations for the bank with your clients and customers? Art, we actually perceive it's not just for the rich. So we try to make art accessible to all people. So we bring our customers, we bring our clients in this space. So as we expand the UOB Painting of the Year competition to the region, which includes Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, and the inaugurating competition in Vietnam last year, we actually invited customers to the award ceremony so that they can get to know the emerging Southeast Asia artistic talent, creating collaboration opportunity for customer and artists. We also showcase their beautiful artwork at the National Gallery of Singapore. So we want to nurture these Southeast Asian artists so that they have a better exposure. It's, as you know, it's always very difficult to be elevated to museum level. Similarly, we also have our Art in Aim competition in Hong Kong, which has been running for seven years. And last year, we expanded to China. And we also collaborate with the Hong Kong Palace Museum to showcase these beautiful winning artworks. But what is more important, we actually collaborate with our customer to display a lot of these artwork in some of their office buildings, in their shop houses, And we also collaborate with them. As I mentioned earlier on, we do auctions so that they can display their artwork. We also make commercial items, like we print some of these beautiful winning artworks onto a tote bag. We make it into T-shirt. We make it into wearable fashion so that more people can have it. And even interestingly, during the Mid-Autumn Festival, we make it as the beautiful hour into the cover of the mooncake boxes. So all this make our young artists get to know and we bring them to the rest of the world. Uh, we create opportunity for them in seminars, art fairs, so that they can have cross-culture dialogue. How has it helped the bank strengthen relationships with customers, especially high net worth clients? Well, as I said earlier on, In UB, we believe art is for everyone. It should not be just for the ultra high net worth. But of course, for those who can afford, we hope that they will help to support us by buying the beautiful artwork through the auctions and so that they also can display it in their offices. But I also find it more importantly is that some of those willing actually to sponsor our uh, artists, the winning artists, so that we're able to give them scholarships. Like, for example, I have um, some customers sponsor our uh, winning artists in the Art in Ink, and they went to New York as a residence artist. And now, through this process, through this exposure, they're becoming more famous, and we are so pleased to see this happen. Thank you for sharing with us today. That was Christine Ip, Head of Group Strategic Communications and Brand, UOB. I'm Lee Kim Siang. Join us next time for more on the future of finance. This episode of Future of Finance was presented by UOB. Find more BT podcasts at businesstimes.com.sg slash podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. This podcast is meant to provide general information only. SPH Media accepts no liability for loss arising from any reliance on the podcast or use of third parties products and services. Please consult professional advisors for independent advice.